That's mind blowing. Oh, a hi. Tell me, how much would you personally pay to learn anything, virtually anything, two to three to even five times faster than you currently do? I know I would pay quite a lot of money for that. Sounds like a superpower, doesn't it? Surely, no more realistic than black magic, right? Well, not based on a recent scientific study from 2021 on the learning process, or more specifically about an effect called the spacing effect. And I want to dedicate this video to explaining to you just how comically easy you yourself can use this to learn anything faster without spending a penny. I'm Mark. I've been a professional artist for a serious number of years, and now I teach art for a living. And this week's episode of YouTube Art School is about to blow your mind. I've myself learned about all this crazy stuff quite recently, and I can't wait to share with you what I've discovered. No, no, quickly, class is starting, we're gonna be late. Class is in session. Pay attention. I said the class wouldn't cost you a penny, but it's still gonna cost you. Cost you the affordable price of either one like or one sub to feed the algorithm. <clears throat> now that you've paid. Here's how this class will go. Real quick, I'll start by explaining how we learn in the first place. So we have a little bit of context. Then we'll dive into the incredible effect that scientists call this spacing effect in learning and how you can use it to multiply the speed at which you learn new material compared to others. We'll then end with a new discovery that takes this effect to a whole new level. Now we're talking about learning in the context of art here, but this seems to apply to virtually anything. Fascinating stuff. Let's get right into it. So uh, how do we learn in the first place? Knowing what to learn is obviously super important, but how we learn is far more important. Yet, it's not something that we usually learn in school, for some reason. It all starts with the brain, our big knowledge sponge. To learn something new, the brain physically changes as our brain cells make new connections. This ability is called the brain's neuroplasticity. There are certain things that you can do to help your brain be more neuroplastic, more spongy, and increase how easy it is for you to learn something new. And of course, many things that make the brain less plastic, therefore making learning something new harder. Obviously, we should always want more neuroplasticity. To visualize this effect better, you can think of the brain as like Play-Doh. It's hard to make anything when the Play-Doh is all dried up, but we can sculpt many things when it's nice and soft. During the day, as we learn new material, the brain will store everything temporarily until we enter deep sleep at night. That's really when the brain will process all this new knowledge and when the new connections are created between our brain cells. If we don't sleep or if we have bad sleep quality, the brain has a hard time processing anything and the new knowledge is essentially discarded instead, it's lost. The new connections are never made. For that reason, sleeping is fundamental to the learning process. If you always have bad sleep or you don't sleep enough, you're not learning anything. You'll remain a dummy. I made a class going over all of this in greater detail, by the way, so I highly recommend that you check it out if that's interesting to you. I'll put the link down in the video description. And so anyways, to recap, we store new information during the day into a, an imaginary temporary folder in our brain, and that gets processed and stored in our memory during deep sleep. At which point, we can actually say that we've learned it because our brain has physically changed. What's believed to be happening though is that the brain replays the information in a loop as we sleep, like we're subconsciously rehearsing what we've learned. Pretty cool. The annoying thing with those new brain cell connections though, of course, is that they're pretty weak at first. That's why we tend to forget things easily, unless we revisit them over and over again. Each time you go over the same learning material, the connections get stronger and stronger and it becomes less likely that you'll forget it. That's learning in a nutshell. Now on to the good stuff. Let me introduce the spacing effect. A generally unknown yet insanely powerful effect in learning. I say unknown, but this is actually very well known in psychology, just not to the general public, to us peasants. It's something that was actually first reported on well over 100 years ago in 1885 by Hermann Ebbinghaus, a German psychologist. It basically refers to the finding that long-term memory is enhanced when study sessions are spaced apart in time. 
rather than back to back over a short period of time. AKA, you learn faster and memorize better when you take breaks while you study, rather than cramming everything at once. It's a discovery that showed our brain does what's called waking rest. So we not only subconsciously replay new information when we sleep, like I mentioned just a minute ago, but this effect also happens in between study sessions if you space them out. This means you can learn or memorize faster if you do this. It's not some ancient knowledge that I've just rediscovered either. Scientists have been continuously demonstrating the spacing effects benefits hundreds of times since. There's been studies that focused on art specifically, but also on a vast number of other topics, showing that the spacing effect works when learning virtually anything. It's a general effect. The study that focused on art, for example, had half the participants get familiar with some obscure painters and their art style by consecutively looking at a small body of work, and then they were asked to match new paintings to the correct painters just based on what they remembered of their style. The second group had to do the same thing, but initially the body of work was presented differently. There was an 18 second gap in between each painting where nothing would be visible, instead of the paintings being shown back to back without pause like for the first group. What's crazy is that the second group that was forced to observe the paintings with an 18 second gap in between was significantly better at matching the art styles afterwards. This suggests that the 18 second wait time was enough waking rest for the brain to subconsciously start to replay the memory of those paintings and gain an advantage when participants were asked to recall those memories. Essentially a similar process to what happens at night during deep sleep except without the need for sleep. See the appeal yet? We can't easily go into deep sleep more than once a day so there's a hard limit there, but waking rest though, which is similar. Well, we can do that whenever we use the spacing effect. Whenever we space out learning by taking frequent breaks. Wow. And by the way, I'll put links to all of my sources in the video description so that you can review them for yourself if you're curious. Now, in our case, all of this begs the question, how do we best space out our art studies to benefit from the spacing effect? Because interestingly, the effect has been shown to work regardless of the time scale. If you were to take breaks of 30 seconds in your studies or 30 minutes or 30 days, the spacing effect works across the board. But which is best though? More breaks of a few seconds or fewer breaks with more time in between? This leads us to a recent discovery from June 2021. Brain imaging allowed the team to observe the brain activity of participants as they were trying to memorize numbers and they noticed something pretty incredible was happening. When participants were asked to stop and take a break or a waking rest, the scan showed that their brain was recalling the memory of what they had just read at approximately 20 times the speed it took them to read it in the first place. In a fraction of a second during that short waking rest, the brain was replaying what it had just seen all subconsciously. It also showed that this recall would happen approximately three times more often during the short waking rest periods than it would before or after the test was completed. So not only are we replaying the memory of what we just learned 20 times faster than what it takes us to memorize it the first time around, but we're also replaying that memory multiple times more often during those short breaks in between practice or study sessions. I started the class by mentioning how learning is just acquiring a memory long term, a strong repeated connection reinforced over time between brain cells. Well, this study clearly shows just how much more learning we can achieve if we use the spacing effect in our studies. It's fascinating stuff. So here's what you gotta do. Whenever you're learning something, at random times every couple minutes, stop. Stop doing anything for 10 seconds. Either close your eyes or stare blankly at something, whatever. Then just resume your studies or whatever you were practicing. If you're a student of mine, and by the way, check out the coupon in the video description for a huge discount on my art program until the end of the month when the price will be going up. I don't want you to miss out on this. But for the 12,000s of you who already joined the program, when watching the classes or practicing the exercises, start using the spacing effect. You'll get a lot more out of the program with basically no extra effort. Now that's a good deal. But of course, like I said, this works for anything that you're learning. 
And that's gonna be it for today's class. So this is obviously an area of science and psychology that will need a lot more research to fully understand, but these new studies shed light on just how fast we can actually learn when we go about it the right way. Leading neuroscientists like Andrew Huberman have mentioned many times this specific effect and how significant it can be to the learning process. Learning anything three times faster on average, maybe more, by leveraging the power of the spacing effect, that's pretty epic. And share the video with a bro if you agree. More people need to know about this. Also, I've just been doodling in the background, but if you want the brush that I use for it, it's part of my custom brush set that you can get for free for being a good student and following until the end. Link in the video description. So a new game-changing learning technique and free brushes. Is it Christmas already? All right, see you next week. That's mind-blowing.